I'm an independent. I'm a libertarian. I don't play the blue and red game. I think now the government is blatantly, openly and blatantly lying about their own calculation. And this is after about 40 years of manipulating that calculation to misstate some of these things to cover up the problems we've had for 40 years. I think now they've gotten to the point where even their own formulas would give them away and betray the weakness in the system that would completely, it would cause people to revolt and flush out the entire government and say, we're done with all of you guys. So now they actually have to blatantly lie about their own number. Hey everybody, this is Rob Keynes with goldsilverpros.com. It is Wednesday, May 11th, 2022. This is my first breaking news segment in a while. I do these when something comes out that I think is particularly impactful uh, to your lives with regards to economics, geopolitics, or whatever the case may be. Today, we're going to be talking about inflation, and I think there's a new development in inflation in that I've always known that the inflation rate is misstated. I wrote about that in 2009 in my book, Drop Shadow, The Truth About the Economy, Chapter 2, spend 50 pages dissecting government reported numbers such as CPI, GDP, and all the rest, and basically break down why the government has adjusted those and is is covering up uh, the true problems in the economy. Well, now, however, I think something has completely changed. What I saw yesterday was a complete staging uh, via the President of the United States telling people that the administration was doing something for inflation. And then we got an inflation print that was way below, I think, what most of us independent market observers expected. And I can't find a reason why. And I'm going to walk through that thesis today. I think the government's not only um, was not only being dishonest in how they calculate the number through hedonic adjustment and geometric weighting and, and those types of things that they use in their statistics, but they're also now blatantly lying about the numbers every month. In other words, I think that they're calculating one number and giving us a different one. They're keeping two sets of books. And I'm gonna show you why I think that's the case. And I think the government has now gone fully into being dishonest with the people to the point that I have zero trust with them now. I don't trust anything that they say. Basically from now on, I'll get into why that's the case. So we're gonna break down the CPI CPI number. It is 8.3% over the last 12 months, this is a year over year print. So the the big headline CPI number that you see will be a year over year print. So this is from April to April, 2021 to 2022. It was 8.3% for the last 12 months. Just for April, in the current month of April, 0.3%. This was slightly over the expected 8.1% from the so-called market experts, but less than the last print, which was 8.5 for the last year over year print and less than what I thought. In fact, I put a poll out yesterday, starting with 8.5 and going up. I said, is it going to be 8.5, 8.8, 9, 9.5? A couple of people said, why not lower? Because I don't see how it could be lower. And I'm going to explain to you why I think that's the case. So let's get into the details. I'm going to go straight to the producer price index first. The producer price index is raising, is up 11.2% year over year. Uh, That's in March, March to March. We haven't gotten the April to April one yet, but that's up 11.2%. What is the producer price index? That is the price for which producers will pay for for goods that input into their process to make final uh, raw goods that will go into their process to make final goods that you'll buy like an iPhone or a camera or a food item or whatever the case may be. So producer prices are rising at a much higher rate then consumer prices are raising according to the government. The the problem with the government now saying inflation is coming down, it takes 30 to 60 to 90 days for producer prices, depending on how long it takes them to manufacture the final goods product and get it shipped to the store to you. It'll take 30, 60, 90 days, depending on the product, different products or, or, you know, inflation transmits differently, takes different amount of time. But those end product prices will have to go up to reflect that. Producers aren't going to absorb all inflation costs on their business and never pass them on to consumers because quite simply, they would go out of business. Um, And if we go further back into uh, the pricing, you have to look at the commodities and look at the increases in the commodity index. 
uh, as the commodity indexes increase and that's higher prices and we see here by the Dow Jones Commodity Index. Um, let's look at to date. Commodity prices have come down just a bit, quarter to date just a bit, but overall commodity prices are very high. The index is very high. So the inputs into what the producers are paying is pretty darn high and their prices have not moved down. That's 11.2%. So the producer price index is already in the double digits. Okay, so I don't believe the CPI 8.5% number because how could, I'm sorry, 8.3%. How could it go down 0.2% when producers are paying more and have been paying more year over year for goods? How does that not get passed on to consumers? Is it shrinkflation? Is it the fact the packages are getting smaller and the CPI calculation is not taking that into effect? <clears throat> and when I, when I talk about this in my book, Drop Shadow, which you can get on Amazon, um, essentially I, I point out the fact that the government has lied about how they calculate these numbers, but that they would print what they thought the new number was because they believed it. They believed their own lies, in other words. Now I think what is different and what's become very apparent is they're not printing what their true numbers are. Yes, they believe in their system is correct. Well, I think it's false, but they'll get that number. I think they're cooking the books and giving a lower number and it's become political. And I'll share with you in a minute why I think that is the case. Um, a couple of other measures of inflation, we have trueflation.com, which attempts to use the government numbers to back out some of their changes. And I'm not gonna go into all of how that works, but you can see here, trueflation, app.trueflation.com, highest uh, year-to-date inflation was 12.8%, according to their calculations, right now, 11.4. So it's in the double digits, and trueflation reflects what we're having in producer price index, which makes more sense. If the producers are paying 11.2% more for goods, wouldn't they pass it on to consumers and we'd have 11.4? So I think trueflation right now is accurately reflecting actual price increases when you look at things like the PPI, what producers are, are paying. But if we break it down and say, forget the way that the government currently calculates it, let's go back to the past and the way the government has calculated it in the past. Why would we do that? Because we want to compare period to period. We want to compare inflation now back to inflation for 1980. Why? Because if you want to look at monetary policy and how the Fed is handling things, then it helps to understand how we measure things before. So if we look at shadow stats, uh, John Williams, who runs this site, is an economist. He's been running this for quite some time. He calculates in, uh, inflation numbers and other numbers. If you've got alternate data, he's got money supply and employment, inflation, CPI, all that stuff. He's calculating inflation based upon the way the government used to before they made all these goofy changes that I talked about in my book. So let's go back and recap. In my book in 2009, I published chapter two, 50 pages on why the government statistics do not accurately reflect true inflation because of the changes that they made and outlined exactly why. And I used a bunch of independent studies and my own studies to prove that the government numbers are not accurately reflecting what consumers pay in end products and therefore not accurately reflecting the decrease in the quality of life that, con that consumers have had, including requiring now two incomes in the household, requiring not being able to retire. Look at all the people that cannot retire. The baby boomers are still in the workforce and can't retire. A lot of that has to do with the government numbers and specifically with inflation. So if you go back to the way to my book, I explain where the calculations have changed to hide it. And that's what we're talking about here on shadow stats is he goes back and says, let's go back to before the government manipulated the numbers and use just the straight numbers, which more reflect actual inflation without all the goofy math that came about. So he's got a 1991 and 1980. Why? Because 1980 is really true inflation where they don't play around with the numbers. They just report them. That is the best true 100% inflation measure. The 90s had additional modifications to them. And the 90 is really where they started to neuter that index and, and to depress the numbers so that it wouldn't look so bad for the government. But even the 1990 numbers, John's got inflation about 13 to 14%. And if you look at the 1980 numbers, what I consider the true numbers, we're sitting at closer to 17%. Okay. The CP, so I think the CPI is misstated because they've goofed around with the numbers. And that's shown on the shadow stat site, geometric weighting, hedonic, all that kind of stuff. All that there's like four basic changes they made. There's more now since I wrote the book in 2009. They've manipulated even more. 
But now is something different. Now I think they're actually lying about even their own calculation and not printing their own calculation for political reasons. And I do that because when you look at true inflation, we're running 11.4. When we look at producer prices, we're running 11.2. But they want us to believe it's fallen from 8.5 to 8.3 when all the inputs to the system inputs to the system are getting more expensive, including the commodities, which have been more expensive for a while. So all of these things, the commodity prices on the far left of the supply chain, the producer prices in the middle, and then the real rates that we're paying, according to these more realistic measurements, are saying we actually have higher inflation. And I wanted to, I wanted to get the second part of the presentation, which is addressing what the administration has done, what the Fed has done. So the Fed has come out and raised their benchmark interest rate, their federal funds rate, by half a point. Uh, so that half a point with expected maybe six more increases this year and potentially tapering off some of their bond purchases. Uh, those are the things that, that, that the government is now claiming, hey, the Fed has done this and the administration is doing other things. That was Biden's speech yesterday. Therefore, inflation came down one, you know, one day after Biden's speech and a few days after you know, the Fed has, has raised the rate, they're saying, well, now inflation has come down. But that's not how quickly it works. So I, I, I want to point out that everything that they've done in the last three to four weeks to combat inflation takes longer than that to come through the system for actual measured inflation to come down. Remember, we have a supply chain. We have commodities, we have producers and wholesalers, then we have retail, and then we have consumers. That stretch, it takes time for products to move through that system. So if you implement a policy right now, it won't affect that until later, and you won't know till 30, 60, 90 days, really, if that policy has taken effect. And here is uh, a confirmation of that from Investopedia. And here is a nice little, I found this article in Investopedia talking about the relationship between the Fed funds rate, which is the rate that the Fed raised, and actual inflation, CPI. So you can see where the Fed raises rates, like we'll take, for example, we'll take 1998 to 2000, prices don't come down for about two years. So the core CPI did not come down for about two years until after the Fed raised the rates. And then two years later, you saw a decrease in, in prices. Well, what about now? From 2004 to about 2006, they raised prices, plateaued them before they brought them down. The prices didn't come down until about 2009, and that was actually during the crash. So I would, I would say that the Fed funds rate increase here had no short-term effect on reducing the CPI or the government's measure of inflation. It was the economic crash led by Lehman and the mortgage market meltdown is what really caused that. They increased the rate between 2016 and 2020, and the CPI ho hovered in a range but did not decrease until 2020. What caused the CPI, the Consumer Price Index, to decrease in 2020? The pandemic. The pandemic and shutting down of the economy caused prices to come down. Why? Because there's less demand and there's less income. Wages fell. People weren't working. People were buying less. They were clustered in their homes, not only in the United States, but around the world. That's why the CPI fell. So the last two times the CPI has had a meaningful fall had to do with shutting down the economy due to the pandemic and had to do with a major recession. The last time the Fed funds rate actually affected CPI was back during the tech crash, and I would actually argue the tech crash is why prices fell from 2002 to 2004. So the, the Fed funds rate does not directly affect the CPI rate in the short term, typically dating back the last 24 years. And I could argue that it's crashes in the economy that actually are affecting the CPI, shutdowns, crashes, recessions, those types of things, that actually affects the CPI. So the, the idea that the Fed funds rate raising that half a point is within two weeks going to actually result in a year over year decrease in inflation is absolute balderdash and a logical impossibility because it takes longer for prices to transmit through the system. And just because you raise interest rates doesn't mean prices are going to fall when across the chain you have higher commodity prices, higher producer prices, and higher consumer prices as measured by these alternative measures. That's how we know the government's lying. But this is what happened. I'm going to go back and share this again, this time with sound. And I'm going to show you what Biden said yesterday, setting everybody up for the inflation number today. This is very important that you watch this, this little clip. Now, when I was watching his address yesterday, I watched most of it. And he was reading off a teleprompter. He was not super responsive. I think the guy's not doesn't have all his faculties uh, 
but but I think that he was just reading what somebody told him. And 99% of it were talking points for the liberal or democratic platform didn't necessarily have to do with all the policies they were using to reduce inflation. But there was one little funny part about inflation that he mentioned where they, because they didn't talk really a lot about how to solve inflation. He, he was trying to skip through inflation really quickly and get to his talking points about the democratic platform and what they're going to do in the midterms and how the democratic party is going to do all this stuff. The little bit they talked about inflation, uh, was really a joke. And here it is. It's it, this little segment's on Twitter. It's 13 seconds. If you want to watch the whole thing, there is an unlisted video on YouTube of the whole thing where they broadcast it on White House channel on YouTube. I actually downloaded the full video to my computer and I have that link to now the private to the private video. I don't know if the White House has made it public, but yesterday it was private. I have the whole thing and I'm just gonna I'm gonna dissect that. If I see anything else goofy in there, I'll bring it to you guys. But here's the perfect segment to talk about inflation. Notice how in the background they're saying lowering cost, tackling inflation. Okay, the Fed just raises benchmark interest rate. This is a day before they release the CPI, which is showing a decrease in consumer prices, which we know is a lie. It's a logical impossibility that could have even happened. Okay, but here is what Biden is stumbling over in his speech trying to tell people about inflation. And I agree with what Chairman Powell said last week, that the number one threat is the strength, and that strength that we build is inflation. So the Fed should, and I agree. So one more time, the strength that we built is inflation. I'm not sure he's even of state of mind enough to know what he's saying. He obviously fumbled over the words that were on the teleprompter, but what is he really trying to say here? Was it him fumbling over the words or did he let go a secret? Listen again. With what Chairman Powell said last week, that the number one threat is the strength, and that strength that we build is inflation. So the number one threat is inflation, or is it the strength that they built in the system to help them monetize all the debt they have in the system? Because we know, according to Congressional Budget Office, the system is unsustainable and is going to crash if we continue to have these deficits and run uh, these big, um, these big um not only the deficits, but the amount of debt we have. And if you extend that out to the 100 to 200 trillion dollars in unfunded liabilities for social programs and military and stuff like that, then you got a really big problem. What is he saying here? Let's so listen to it one more time. Is he tripping over himself or is he revealing a secret? I'll let you guys decide. And I agree with what Chairman Powell said last week, that the number one threat is the strength, and that strength that we build is inflation. Now, you could just chalk this up to him being, you know, an older guy, and maybe he's getting into that stage where, you know, it's harder for him. Well, understand when you get to that age, and I'm not making fun. I'm really not making fun. I think the guy's probably going to an age in which he's starting to get a little senile because he's at that age. And again, that's not making fun. It just happens. It's going to happen to all of us. It'll happen to me. So was he tripping over his words, or was he saying the strength is inflation, and that inflation is what's going to help us tackle the debt while we lie about it blatantly? with our number. I do not trust the government number anymore. And, and there's two degrees of trust. There's one, there's trusting that the government's going to report what they believe is true, even if what they believe is true is manipulated in and of itself. In other words, they're believing their own story and they're reporting it. The second stage of trust that I think that they have broken is, I think that they actually calculate one number internally. They know it's a blatant lie. And for political reasons, there now, and I'm not talking Democrats versus Republicans, I'm talking the entire, both sides of the aisle are so afraid of the inflation story and so afraid of their voters that everybody's on board with the government actually blatantly lying about inflation. I would not put this past either Republicans or Democrats. I'm an independent, I'm a libertarian, I don't play the blue and red game. I think now the government is blatantly, openly and blatantly lying about their own calculation and this is after about 40 years of manipulating that calculation to misstate some of these things to cover up the problems we've had for 40 years. I think now they've gotten to the point where even their own formulas would give them away and betray the weakness in the system that would completely, it would cause people to revolt and flush out the entire government and say, we're done with all of you guys. So now they actually have to blatantly lie about their own number. So it's not just that they manipulated the number I showed you via shadow stats. It's that they're lying about their own number to the public. And it's blatantly obvious. 
all of the indicators are that we should have had a higher inflation print, all of them. And I think that you're just flat out lying. What does that mean? Of course, I'm a gold silver channel. Uh, I'm not your financial advisor. Go consult your financial advisor. Don't take anything I think I say as legitimate uh, research, do your own. That being said, this is what I believe in. This is what I do. Buy land, get out of debt, gold and silver, and look for businesses to, to throw off cash and make money. That's what I'm doing. So if you guys are interested in silver, we do have a partnership with someone, which I'm going to show you how to get to. If you go to our website, goldsilverpros.com, click right here on this button, Precious Metals Deals. It'll light up when you push it. Our number one supplier, our trusted supplier is in over at arcsilver.com. And if you click here on access deals, you'll get better deals through our website than you can get even through his website or through just about any other silver dealer in the US. Why is that? Because he offers prices discounted. Prices discounted on silver is something like $1.40, $1.50 per thousand ounce bar. Of course, you have to ask him per thousand ounce bar. He's got 40% Kennedy halves at a lower price than anybody on planet Earth. And he's got kilo bars and silver. He's even got some gold. He, last time he was on the show, he had a gold kilo bar as well. Please note when you're filling out the form to put your email, uh, use uh, the email he'll email you back is invest at arcsilver.com, invest at arcsilver.com. Make sure you whitelist that and put that in your address book so that when he responds to you from this form, it doesn't go into your spam. And also make sure that you put a number here so they can text you. He won't call you. But if for some reason your email's not working, he'll text you and it'll come from this number. This is his number. So he'll text you from this number or he'll email you. Uh, make sure you do that so it doesn't go to spam. If you want to go to their website, you simply go to arcsilver.com. This is, okay, $1.45 over spot for 1,000 ounce silver bars. You're not going to get that any cheaper anywhere in the world, at least from a retail dealer. It will not happen. And you will not get candy 40% half dollars at 129 over spot anywhere else on planet Earth. And he's got other things that aren't on the website. Of course, if you want to see me opening my thousand ounce bar, I did an unboxing uh, right around October of last year for Halloween. And that's on his website. You can see my own experience with ordering through him. It was basically painless and flawless. And I encourage you guys to do that if you want to get your silver. Again, silver cheaper than anywhere on the planet and really good deals in gold as well. Again, breaking the government is flat out lying about inflation, do not believe them. They are flat out lying now and they've taken it to a new level. I think I've just proven that. They've taken it to a new level. They're liars, okay? And this is going to come back to haunt them. And again, I'm not talking specifically about Democrats or Republicans, I'm a libertarian. I believe no matter who you have in office at this, this point, it's in their best interest to lie to your face. And what you have to do now is do your own research. Don't listen to me, do your own research protect yourself and don't listen to the bullshit that's coming out of Washington and all of its affiliated entities. Thank you guys so much. Till next time, this is Rob Keats, Gold Silver Pros.